from ABC7. Well, hi. hi. We have such a lovely <laughs> guest. Hi. Yes. hi. hi. Okay, well, this is very exciting. Um, but we'll, we'll introduce you in just a second okay. because we're going to keep you a secret even though everyone okay. can see you. <laughs> and it's going to be very exciting. I hope you all are ready for this. So now it is time to talk about hot topics. And we have a very special guest with hi, us this morning. Hi, ladies. Hi, gorgeous. So good to see you. Nice to see you. So this is um, New York Times best-selling author and TV personality Nicole Lappin, and she's joining us here. And you and forgot a former co-anchor of Reggie Aki I know. at oh. the CNN back in the day. I got stories. Uh, That's uh, for the after dark <laughs> version of the show. I can't we'll wait. Say that. I wish you were here ready. for this. This I is so know. amazing. Reggie is here in spirit. In spirit. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, okay. it is also now time for our Live Nation concert ticket giveaway, and we have two tickets to see The Who on Wednesday, October 9th at the new Chase Center in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is vote right now or anytime during Hot Topics at abc7news.com slash vote. Just fill out a really short form and then we will pick the winner at the end of the show. All right, let's get into it. Yes. So the first question, are you worried when you go to the movie theater? And the reason why we're asking this is because the movie Joker, it comes out next Friday, but it's really reigniting a lot of fears about potential violence at theaters that are showing this film. And some theaters have even gone so far as to ban costumes. Army officials in Oklahoma, they're warning about online chatter of a possible shooting. And of course, this ties back to the 2012 Aurora, Colorado theater shooting during the Dark Knight Rises. I so understand why, why people are concerned, especially people who had to live through such mm -hmm. an experience, you yeah. know, and just... You know, it just all kind of comes back to you. Yeah, the fears are certainly warranted, I think. Um, and if it's just that they're asking to not wear a costume, I say, why not? If that's going to provide people some more comfort. Uh, it's really, I, I can't. I could not imagine being in that situation where there is a shooting and it seems like it's happening more often and more often, so they want to take as many precautions as they can. And I think this is a good conversation to be having as well. I was just looking at an interview from the director who said that some of the other lessons here are lack of love, mental health, lack of compassion. So as long as we're opening up this dialogue, then that's a win. Definitely. Yeah. So the question is, do you... Are you worried when you go into the movie theater? I can't say that I feel super concerned because I enjoy going to the movie theater. Yeah. I still go. The shooting and just different things have not stopped me from going. I will say that I just kind of look around a little bit, but for the most part, I don't think I'm worried. I'm still able to go enjoy. I don't know if I would feel that way because people are honing on this specific movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, no. the movie, I think, itself takes it to another level, yeah. and obviously we're reminded of what happened in 2012. But let's see what other people are thinking. My eyes are not as great as yours, Kamasi, but I... Contacts. 66% <laughs> say they're not worried about going to I'm not worried. Right. And by the way, have you all ever been to a movie by yourself? It's yes. Good. It's real good. <laughs> it's really good. You just eat all Day the popcorn. Night. That's yes. what you want. <laughs> Talk to yourself. Run, girl. Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You're the talker in the theater. No, Kamasi. Oh, my goodness. All right. So here's our next one here, which we have talked a lot about this morning. A school in Indiana sent a letter home to parents saying no dating is allowed for fifth graders. We want to know, should schools get involved in students' dating lives? ABC7news.com slash vote and let us know. So this is the letter. It gave students two days mm. to end any dating relationship they had. The school district says this isn't a no tolerance policy they're just trying to protect student feelings encourage developmentally appropriate friendships and most importantly protect instructional time totally get their motive here however I mean did you have a boyfriend in fifth grade totally um, <laughs> totally and your feelings are so raw then you just feel so many things right <laughs> like I remember my high school boyfriend's name I don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning you know like everything is just so much more heightened but I gotta say I know a lot of the folks a whopping majority say they think get out of the dating lives but if y'all want to get involved in a 35 year old dating <laughs> life I have heartbreak too like I'm okay it's with the dating bad on myself. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. I just think like rejection and whatever you go through, even if it's in the fifth grade, that is a part of life. So it you sure have is. to like have your little heartbreak, sit in the fifth grade classroom, look oh. at your old little boo, <laughs> talking to somebody else. It's just a part of yeah. life. And I think these are lessons that you have to learn. And what does dating really constitute as a fifth grader? I, I mean, know. are you guys like going, I mean, it's just probably like they're hanging out and going to hold hands. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. So let, let them be. Well, 
Well, the mega clearly overwhelmingly thumbs down. That's going to be a no. I mean, we talked with the moms, right, this morning, and they, they say no. Yeah. And one of our colleagues has a fifth grader, and her daughter said no oh. to the boy that asked her to be her girlfriend. Yes, so, girl. Go ahead, girlfriend. <laughs> Get it. Superwoman. We'll be talking about that later. Yes, yes. Supergirl. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. Japan Airlines is getting a lot of buzz this week because it unveiled this new feature which shows you where infants are sitting on the plane. So go to abc7news.com slash vote. We want to know if you think it's helpful or if it's just unnecessary. So check this out. If you book a flight, this is what you might see. When parents reserve a seat for their child between eight days and two years old, a child icon appears and it lets everybody know that there's an infant in that seat. And as you can imagine, it's getting a range of reactions. Some people are praising it. Some people are wondering why travelers can be so intolerant toward other passengers because we want to sleep yes I love this. <laughs> I absolutely love yes. it. No yes. problem with yes. it. Yes. And I will book the seat furthest away if possible. And it's to Japan. Like, that is a long flight. <laughs> Mama doesn't want to be next to a crying baby. Can they also have a whole filter for, like, smelly folks? No. Yes. They need to have, this is what, don't call me rude, but people who want to have long conversations, can I you am. click that on there, too? Yes. Because yes. so I, I just, like, that's my zone out time, and mm -hmm. I don't want to, hey, girl. I'm sleepy. Yes, like how you have the Uber silent ride. We have to have the silent seats for the plane. Yes. So you, yes. there's an area for the infants. There's an area for the people that just want a moment to themselves while we fly to Japan. Amen. Yes. I yes. Like that. And <laughs> most people agree. Helpful. We we say so. Yes. I love it. Well, these are fun. Well, Nicole, our lovely friend, is not Hi. going anywhere yet. We are going to be talking about her new book and how to become a superwoman in 12 steps. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome back, everyone. We are here with Nicole Lappin, who's most recently known for her fabulous appearance in Hot Topics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yes. it. Basically, I can die a happy woman yeah. now. Thank Lame you. <laughs> but she is also a New York Times bestselling author and Less TV important. personality. <laughs> no, what part? Yes, it's part. because look at this. Thank you. And she's Reggie's book. friend. Yes. That is what we should have said first. Yes. I have secrets about Reggie. <laughs> I have stories about Reggie. I do for days. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you also have a really good story. See, check out that segue here. You take Right in front of us. <laughs> um, you know, Becoming Superwoman is a personal book for you, we understand, um, in many ways. But can you kind of start off just letting the viewers know what you are getting at here with these steps to becoming a superwoman? Because it's not about being everywhere and doing everything all at one time. Now, Superwoman, the character, the one word version, wants to do it all and be it all and be all things to all people. So ultimately, she's nothing to herself. And I said, I don't want to be that kind of woman. I just want to be a super space woman, mm -hmm. a woman who puts her oxygen mask on first before helping others. And they don't say that on the plane before takeoff just to waste time. It's totally true. You cannot be of service to anyone else if you're crashing and burning yeah. yourself. And I want to ask you about this because when you talk about your career, you've done so much at such a young age and it seems like you're just moving on and doing all these things. Was there something that happened in your journey where you're like, whoa, I need to reevaluate things? Yeah, I had a complete mental, emotional, physical breakdown that stemmed from severe burnout after after the launch of my second book, my last book, and it made me rethink everything. I had an emergency admittance to the hospital, and it made me realize that self-care is actually the biggest asset or liability mm -hmm. in your career. When it's off, it can bring you to rock bottom like it did for me, and when it's on point, it can actually bring you more success than you ever imagined. Mm -hmm. You know, we often have this equation wrong, that we think we're going to be happy or balanced when we get there, like a certain job or a certain salary or a man or kids or whatever, and then we get there and almost immediately we change the goalpost on mm -hmm. ourselves so we never get our brain to the other side of balance or happiness and that can be really hard on ourselves yeah yes and it's always the what's next what's next and then there sometimes next ends up being a breakdown for people um, and you have some really incredible steps in here 12 to be exact could you bring you know just a couple of them up that you think are really important for people to hold on to well the first step is and many of you have a problem, like a lot of 12-step recovery programs, and all of my books are 12-step plans for that reason, is because you actually have to look your problem in the eye. It takes away some of its power, but that's how you can confront it. Burnout was named by the World Health Organization as a condition, as you guys well know. So it's something that's happening. We are suffering here. I did the largest study ever done on women and burnout, and I found that we're reaching burnout and breakdown in the 80 and 90% levels. That's bananas. The most scary stat of that is that most of our 
uh, most of us think the pace of our lives is sustainable. It's not. Something's got to give. Well, yeah. this is my question for you because a lot of times I think women might feel like, oh, if I do this, I'm giving up on my mm -hmm. dream or I'm failing or I'm settling. So how did you get past that, balancing self-care and the goals that you set for yourself? Well, I think another step is boundaries and realizing that saying no sometimes to other people is saying yes to yourself. Shonda Rhimes says no is a complete sentence. And I know that this can be difficult at work sometimes, but it's better to say yes to things you can actually do well instead of being so worried we as women don't want to disappoint other people. But what's most disappointing is that you don't have the bandwidth to actually do a great job if you do say yes to something. Oh, I love that. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> or no. <laughs> or, or no. Okay. Thank you so much, Nicole Lappin, everybody. Yes. Her book, Awesome Here, Becoming Superwoman, Available right now. Right now? Yes. So make sure to go check it out. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, and we'll be right back, everybody.